coming up, I attempt to infiltrate Gymshark HQ and interview 28-year-old founder Ben Francis. Don't you dare move that mouse. For those of you that don't know who I am and don't know who Goat are, I'm sorry, I really haven't got the time. I've got 34 seconds. You're going to have to Google that one. So after 400 daily vlogs, I've been set a different kind of filming challenge, a weekly one, where I'll be sticking my snout into other people's business to try and understand the who's, what's, why's, when's and where's of the social media world. And the topic this week, Gymshark, getting an interview with the founder, Ben Francis. I thought it would be so much easier. Objective, interview Gymshark founder, Ben Francis. Step one, send well-worded email and wait patiently for a response. Next step, refresh email inbox every two minutes. This is probably going to take a little bit of time. Meanwhile, I'll find out about Gymshark. Chapter 1. Who the hell are Gymshark? Gymshark was founded in 2011 by a 19-year-old Ben Francis out of his parents' garage whilst delivering pizzas and hand-sewing the initial garments. You get the picture. This guy grafted hard to get Gymshark from his garage to the Avengers facility you find them in today. And in 2017, Gymshark became the fastest growing company in the UK. And Ben had made more money than Richard Branson had done at the same age. And by the sounds of things, he's not done yet. Sure, now your ambition is uh, to make Gymshark what Nike is to the United States and what Adidas is to Germany. But that is no mean feat, is it? How are you going to try and realise that goal? In August this year, the company had its first ever investment from a US-based private equity firm, General Atlantic, taking a 21% stake and raising the value of the business to unicorn status. Unicorn status could mean anything. So how have Gymshark come to dominate the e-commerce world of sports leisure wear and become a globally recognisable brand? There are many questions, dear viewer, that I'm going to find out. Camera speed, action. I've got no idea where to start. Are you there? I forget that you're actually in another country. Yeah, I'm in Tenerife. This is my producer, slash researcher, slash fashion guru, Craig Brightley. He should point me in the right direction. What are you up to today? What's the plan? I think the first step for me is to go to some bodybuilding powerlifting clubs. Why? To understand Gymshark, you've kind of got to understand gym culture. I want to speak to some real sort of muscle men and women. Muscle people. The pumping iron sure. type. Muscle people. Well, good luck. Deep breaths when you're doing your reps. Make sure you've got your leggings on. Protein shake in hand. I might drink a raw egg. Eggs are good. Eggs are great. Hopefully I won't get tangled in the equipment like last time. After a breakfast of champions, I set off again in the goat car. I don't want to park near that gym because they're very muscly and they're very scary. Are well, you filming this? Yeah. Just had a slight parking altercation. Didn't want to park near the next gym that I'm going to because I saw a few people loitering outside and they looked enormous. And yes, I got scared. I'm doing a mini documentary on Gymshark. Do anyone else with you? Or just do it by yourself? No, just me. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Well, go for it. Yeah? King's Gym is home to some pretty serious gym goers. It's about the size of an airplane hangar and blasts rather intense music, the perfect place to scope out some serious muscle people. Yeah, I'm affiliated with Gymshark as well, so. Are you? I have a strong relationship with them in the sense of, you know, when they have events, they invite me along, I go to all their events. If they've got a new range out, they'll send me a sample of it so that I can Really? Wear. You're three-time world champ. I am the three-time Pro Fitness Model World Champion. This is where I come to train, get my head down. The Fitness Model World, do you, do you run into Gymshark a lot as a brand? Oh, 100%. Gymshark's everywhere. They're not just a clothing brand as well. You know, they're, they're, they're a lifestyle as well. That's what I like about them. They've just, they've taken over the gym world by storm. I don't know anyone that trains that hasn't got Gymshark outfit. To be a Gymshark athlete, does yeah. that mean a lot? Yes, there is a prestige behind the Gymshark athletes. The fitness model champion before me, Sean Stappen, he's, he's a Gymshark athlete. Even though I'm not a part of their group, they still make me feel a part of, and I think that's what makes them different. Do you know what I mean? Like, they are gym. <laughs> My next uninvited stop was Squats Gym in South London, an old school establishment with the Incredible Hulk on front desk. Hello. Oh my God, you know my name. Yeah, I know you. The camera gave me away. <laughs> Look, okay, I've got 24 hours yeah. to get shredded. It would never happen. Well, you haven't, see, you haven't seen me without my... Uh... <laughs> I don't want to even. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a really quick walk around the gym? Old school gym, very old school gym. The crowd here is different. I'm thinking possibly the... You're thinking? I'm not. Okay, failed. As I was sternly being put through my paces, 
I began wondering, was this really going to help me in my quest to talk to Ben Francis? If we're talking about gym culture, do you think it's changed in the last few years? Uh, yeah, it's like a hardcore gym. People come, they do their job, they sweat, they go home. They come to train, not to post themselves on, the, on the Instagram or anything. Have you heard of Gymshark? No. No? No. Okay. Let's start again. Yes, of course. <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking more of the more Ponzi market. Yeah, you know, like the um, like the upmarket gyms where Paul housewives go and it's all about, you know, how good they look. You know what I mean? What they're wearing and so forth and so forth. They, like the David Lloyds of the, of the gyms. Okay. And this place is, I suppose... Spin sawdust. Old school. So I'm not going to find you on Instagram. You'll, you'll see me on Instagram, but not, not doing no workouts, trying to sell myself or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not just brassing myself off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Back at King's Gym, Williams allowed me to watch some of his gruelling workout regime. You're not human. I like to call that inches. You don't become a three-time world champion doing what everyone else does. Really? I really couldn't leave without asking for some one-on-one -on -one world champion training. Pause. If you don't know what a Gymshark athlete is, you're certainly not looking at one. Gymshark began using athletes to market their very first clothes, back when influencer marketing still made people go, I'm confused. How does it work? It is magic. Right from the word go, they shun traditional marketing channels and lay the foundation for a global community of athletes, all with the same shared values and simultaneously driving engagement back to the mothership. Clever, right? Gymshark sponsors the likes of Ross Edgley, who we actually met back at Goat HQ whilst filming a podcast with Nico Rosberg. And kind of like Jesus and his 12 apostles, they have their esteemed ambassadors, amongst them Nicky Blackater, Steve Cook and David Laid. And the combined following of these fitness titans? too many zeros to count. We'll just call it many, many millions. Gymshark saw the opportunity for leveraging the star power of their influencers, creating community-focused events, world expos, and pop-up stores. But I'm curious, would the average person recognize these Insta-famous athletes? None of them. No, no idea they are. I know they were in Gymshark, but I just didn't know who they are. Have you ever seen them before? No. 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 Gymshark athletes, ring any bells? I mean, I know, I know what they are, yeah. So I'm confused. How have Gymshark built a business using influencers no one's even heard of? I'm going to take you through influencer marketing in a scientific manner using this pen and this whiteboard. God. Traditional marketing is a bit like me standing at Piccadilly Circus and screaming about Iron Man figurines. No one's really that interested. People are probably going to think I'm weird. Has he got a ferret in his pocket? Influencer marketing, on the other hand, is still me screaming, but I'm screaming from inside Comic-Con, where everyone's interested and no one is wondering whether I've got a ferret in my pocket. Back to the task at hand, getting an interview with Ben Francis. If emails weren't working, then perhaps a letter would grab Ben's attention. Something provocative. Hi Ben, please give me an interview and I will give your turtle back. Um, creative, I'll give you that. I mean, I doubt he actually has a turtle, so I mean, it's an empty threat. Well, what if he does have a turtle? Do you, do you know anyone with a turtle? I used to have um, pet eels. What? I used to stroke them as well. Seriously? Yeah, that's true. I mean, now I don't think this is that weird. Okay, 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 look, hostage note might be a bit too far, but let me tell you what I am sending. Drum roll, please. This. I ordered the Aston Villa 2021 home kit. That badge is proper ridged plastic. I found out that he was a Villa fan because I went on his Twitter and there he is in claret and blue at a game. Not only that, Ooh. Gymshark number 20 on the back. So my thoughts are, I wrap this in a gold box. I send it to Ben Francis. He opens it, he goes, wow, I'm an Aston Villa fan. That's thinking outside the box. Yeah, the Aston Villa shirt's definitely it. The no, no. This is going to be so easy. The impact is huge, affecting Birmingham, the suburb Solihull, home to more than 1.6 million people. <sighs> so the Midlands has gone into a second lockdown and my parcel is sat at the post office. It can't be collected. No one's there. No one's in the office. Ben isn't going to get his personalised Aston Villa shirt, at least this week. The thing is, I actually visited Gymshark HQ the day before the Midlands went into their second lockdown. It just didn't go as expected. Roll the scene. I imagine that I'm gonna get there and 
No, uh, who knows? They might be really friendly. Just like Martin Freeman in The Hobbit, I set off for Jim Chark HQ with a sense of blind optimism for what lay ahead. Sitting just off the M42 near Birmingham, this mega facility was sure to welcome me with open arms and divulge all the secret formulas that have led to Jim Chark's success. I've just got to get inside first. Hello to Jim Chark, the guys from Birmingham, everyone knows about him, don't they? Oh, do you know his name? Yes, I do, his name is... I don't know. Hey. Okay, so we've arrived at a massive business park and every single building looks like Gymshark. The closer I got to Gymshark HQ, the more nervous I was feeling. And I started wondering whether turning up unannounced was really the best idea. Ben Francis, in the window. I'm here. Ready to rumble. Zack, I'm out. Keep going. Oh God, nerve wracking. The moment of truth had arrived. Hello, I don't have an appointment. How do I explain this? Yeah. We're making a film about Gymshark. I thought I'd just rock up. Yeah, I don't need an appointment. No, it's a very nice building. Mm -hmm. I didn't even try and bribe you. No, you can't do that, it's illegal. Can I sit in the lobby? No. Can I charge my phone? No, you literally cannot be in the building. I, I had to. Earlier. Can I catch people outside, or is that no? No, it's illegal as well. Okay. Yeah, because you are on our premises. So. Right. Security car is now behind me. Oh my god, this is awful. Despite their best efforts, I did manage to lose security with some evasive manoeuvres. I then hopped the fence, scaled the building, and I set up my kit. So here it is, dear viewers. Here's my exclusive interview with Jim Shark founder and my new best friend, Ben Francis. Roll the real interview. Thanks for sitting down with me, Ben. I know you're really busy. I have to apologise. The parcel I sent, I know, didn't get delivered to you. So I think it's just carelessness. You must be bombarded with interview requests at the moment. How are you finding that? It's an absolute nightmare because I hate, I hate the fact that I'm, I'm sat still. Do you want to do the interview standing up? No, not really. I mean, I'd love to be Prime Minister, but that's about it. Prime Minister? Wow. Why do you think you'd make a good PM? I think my mental makeup is probably well built for that. But then if you stick a camera in front of my face and say, Ben, ask a few questions, then I'm, I'm cacking myself. You must face a lot of pressure during your job. What do you tell yourself during the tough moments? There is no issues. There's never any reason to panic. Everything that goes wrong is so, in some way is fixable. What if Gymshark HQ disappeared into thin air tomorrow? If that disappeared, I would absolutely love to start again and I would thrive on it and I would vlog the whole thing. I've actually had quite a bit of vlogging experience. Maybe I could give you a few tips. Do you know what? Touch wood, that doesn't have to happen. Then perhaps I start my own sports leisure wear brand and vlog my own journey. Don't bother unless it's actually what you want to do. The amount of people that I see just rip Gymshark off because they want to make a quick book and, it, and they disappear. Copycats are the worst. Yeah, I feel very similar. So what do you want to accomplish with Gymshark? We want to be bigger than everyone. World domination? Oh God, yeah. And what's your plan for that? Plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Like We're making sure that you know all possible issues are covered way before. What about Plan E? I don't really think about it, to be honest. Mm. Well, thanks for accepting the interview. That was just naivety. Maybe we can invite another guest speaker. Who would your dream guest be? Do they have to be alive or dead? Let's stick with alive for now. Bill Gates. Any particular reason for Mr Gates fitting the bill? Because he's called as shit. This video is going to go up tomorrow. Have you got any suggestions of what the copy could be? Or someone somewhere will try and arrest him for something. Yeah. Clickbaity, I like it. So what have we learned? We've learned that influencer marketing is undeniably a cornerstone to Gymshark's meteoric success, that the very nature of celebrity has changed, and despite bucking traditional marketing norms, they've come out on top. But not only that, we've also learned that I look fantastic in active leisure wear, Ben Francis probably doesn't have a turtle, Craig used to stroke his pet eels, and no, I do not have a ferret in my pocket. Shh. Subscribe for more incisive investigative journalism from me, Matthew Wyatt, for the GOAT agency. Now off your pot. Can I come in here? Can I just ask you a quick question? Well, for research purposes. Can I do it with the funny machines? Can you do it with the funny machines? Do you recognise any of these individuals? No, I don't know. Oh, I am 49, mate. <laughs>